In this lesson, we'll create our first database collection, our first Mongo collection. And it'll be used to store the messages that will eventually be shown in our message board. Let's begin by getting rid of the default code that came with our app. So I'm deleting all this stuff from HTML and also all the code that's inside is client in my JavaScript file. Notice how every time I save, the application reloads the newest version. So changes that I do in the files are shown right away on the browser. And that fantastic feature occurs when you're running your app, of course, and it's called hot code uh, push. It runs, it works not only when you're developing, but also in production. So if you have thousands of clients connected to your app and you update something, they will all get the latest version of your application. Let's go back to creating our collection. So I'm gonna create that collection here. When you create collections, they are put outside of the whole client-server dichotomy because you want your collections to be accessible in both locations. When it comes to a server, they refer to a MongoDB collection, a database that is stored in your server. When you're on the client, what you're really accessing is a local copy of that information by default, the whole database, but you later on will learn how to send only some data. Um, so you're working with a local client side database that is not persistent called mini Mongo. By not persistent, I mean that if you refresh the page or close your browser, that's all just gone. It's just variables that are stored in your app. Now, the really fantastic thing about Mongo is that those two things are kept in sync. Whenever you change something on that local copy, those changes are sent, are pushed to the server. And when things change in the server, or when some other client changed something that changed the server, those changes from the server are sent back to the, are sent to all of the clients, and therefore it updates the user interface as well. <clears throat> so this is called reactivity, even on a database level. We want our collection to be a global variable in our Meteor app. So we're not gonna use the var keyword. This is gonna be called messages. New Mongo dot collection. And the name is going to be messages. Now, what is the difference in, in Meteor between local and global variables? Whenever you use the var keyword, that variable is only gonna be available inside of the current file. When you don't use the var keyword, the, this is going to be available in other files too, which is normally the case that what you want when it comes to collections, because you will be accessing them from different files. That's why I've declared it as a global variable. So let's save that and wait for the, for the code push so that now we can access that and we can access it in the console. So this is something, if you've done other database, uh, if you've used other frameworks before that include databases, or if you haven't, this should feel somehow like magic. You're accessing the database on the browser's console. So how can we fetch for data? We can type in find, the find method, which gives us um, a cursor to the results. But if we want all the results, we just type fetch. There are no results. There are actually two results. Uh, I was wrong because I already added some data in here. So let's see the data that I added. I added one object that is simply content that says hello world. And the other one is the same. They all have their unique ID. This is created by Mongo. How can I add a new entry? It's very simple. I can just do insert and add some object. So this will be content of the message will be uh, please save me. We can add more fields too, but I'm just gonna add that single field. So we added another one, and now we have three objects in our database. So what if I go to a different client, let's say an incognito window. So an incognito window would be as if I'm a different, I'm representing as if I'm a different user. So I go to the same application, nothing being shown yet. And I also wanna access this, this same um, collection. And as you see, you, you have all those three objects. Now, what if I add another, another entry to this, to this collection? 
so let's call it um, buenos dias, hello in Spanish, good morning in Spanish. And I <clears throat> do another query, see how that, that's also added. So basically what happened was that I inserted something locally that was sent to the server, to my local server, and that was sent back to all the other clients that were connected to that server. So this is absolutely fantastic, and it's great when it comes to web application development, as, as you'll find once you start using it, and also as you start learning the quirks and also all the security concerns, of course, that, that there are associated to this, but that can be properly handled in Meteor. So to summarize, what we did was get rid of some basic uh, default code, and we learned that Meteor actually refreshes the app as we change files. We created a new collection as a global variable so that it could be accessed by other JavaScript files, and we put it outside the whole client-server dichotomy because we do want this to be in both the client and the server. We learned that on the server side, this is actually a real Mongo collection. On the client side, it's a local representation of, of, of Mongo, and thanks to reactivity, changes get pushed in both directions. So whatever you change in the server gets pushed to the client, whatever you change in the client gets pushed to the server. As you learn later on, there are things to customize these, there are ways to only send some information to the client if you don't want them to access the whole database. That's all, those are all things that exist, but this is the very basics of it, how to create a new collection.